Hi everyone, welcome to Business Live. Tonight on the program, Ghana owes 19 nations $1.165 billion and is expected to repay the loans between now till 2022. We'll tell you more. Also coming up, Institute for Energy Policies and Research warns perennial power outage could return if grid coal is not resourced to undertake major transmission repairs next year. Plus, telecom sector players want the communication service tax to be scrapped completely. Ahead, we hear from the CEO of the telecoms chamber, Ken Ashibe. Difficulties also in the, um, the, the, the industry. The cost of doing business in the industry is quite high. The issues of taxation is quite high. And these are things, these are conversations that we are having with government. Thanks for making a date. We've got details right after this break. Welcome back to Business Live. My name is Daryl Kwao. Tonight, beside multilateral and commercial loans, Ghana owes $1.165 billion as bilateral debt to 19 countries. According to the World Bank, the United States is the biggest creditor with $245.1 million. Charles Nixon Yaboa has been looking at the composition of the debt. We have uh, three types of debt. We have the bilateral debt, the multilateral debt, and the commercial debt. And according to the World Bank debt statistics, Ghana owes 19 countries about $1.165 billion. And United States and China together constitute about 40.6% of Ghana's bilateral debt. There are other nations as well. On the continent, Egypt is the biggest creditor. Ghana owes Egypt uh, by 50 plus million dollars. Mauritius about 10 million dollars. So together, Ghana owes these nations over 1.1 billion dollars. And the most interesting aspect is we need to service these debt between now and 2022. But because of COVID, I believe that the authorities will be looking at renegotiating these uh, repayment. Bilateral debt comes with favorable terms and conditions, so that could give the nation some space to more or less uh, renegotiate some of these repayments. And that is very critical as far as we are concerned. Our debt levels keep rising, but we are hoping that going into next year and 2022, the rate of borrowing by the government would go down or will be slow. And that is very key because when we keep on borrowing, what becomes of a concern is the principal repayment and interest payment as well, and that eats into our revenue. So we have very little fiscal space in terms of funds that we can use for developmental projects as well. So basically what the World Bank is saying is that Ghana owes these 19 nations, and that is captured in their international debt statistics. It is country specific, and with Ghana, we owe 19 nations as far as our total debt stock is concerned. Our business editor Charles Nixon Yabua with that update on our bilateral debt situation. Now, the Institute for Energy Policies and Research is warning that the perennial power outage properly called Doomso could return if the Ghana grid company is not resourced to undertake major transmission repairs next year. Earlier, I spoke with Kojo Poku, who is the executive director of the Institute for Energy Policies and Research. Some of the things that we pointed out in our review is that government needs to resource the grid co company who deals with transmission. In the past, we've had um, outages due to generation, and what we are forecasting is going forward in 2021 and beyond if the grid co company um, and its work is not resourced. The transmission lines in the country is facing a number of challenges, and because of these challenges, um, we have a lot of low voltages, especially in the southern part of the country. And we feel that the next load shedding or the next form of power interruption in the country will be as a result of bad transmission lines across the country. Great. And um, also in a document that you have uh, released to the media that I have seen, uh, you've been making the case for decoupling in the energy ministry where you feel that, you know, the oil and gas sector should be separated from uh, the power sector. Why do you make that case and to what, to what end really? Well, because of some of the um, review that we did, we see that the power sector needs a lot of attention. You know, the generation side, the distribution side and the distribution, uh, and the distribution 
Um, like I said in the past, most of the problem from 2012 to 2016 was mostly to do with the, in the, uh, the inability to have enough gem coals in the country. Mm -hmm. Now we have generating capacity. Now we have what you call full security. When the fuel is now um, generated, how do you now distribute it? How do you now transmit it? We are seeing a rise in the losses in distribution. We are seeing a rise in the loss in transmission. So if you are to separate the ministry, the overseeing ministry, which is now Ministry of Energy, you now separate it to Ministry of Power and Ministry of Oil and Gas. It allows the minister who oversees Minister of Power to now have an in-depth look at the mm. problems and make sure that there's um, resources to fix it. From power to communication and telecom sector players want the communication service tax to be scrapped completely. According to them, it is a nuisance tax which makes it difficult for telcos to make more revenue whilst government also accrues more income tax. Ken Ashigbe is chief executive of the Chamber of Telecommunications. Of COVID and the fact that we had to do a lot of virtual things. Yes, the networks, you know, the, the data usage went up. But you need to bear in mind, it is in the same period that we're talking about the networks benefiting that you've had Etel decide to leave the market. You think that any shareholder would decide to leave a market that they are cashing in and they are making, you know, extra profits? You know, it, it has, so it just tells you that there are difficulties also in the, um, the, the, the industry. The cost of doing business in the industry is quite high. The issues of taxation is quite high. And these are things, these are conversations that we are having with government. Fortunately for us, if we take the party that, you know, the MPP, if you take, look at their manifesto, they themselves in the manifesto talk about the fact that they will look into further reducing the cost of data by reducing licensing and spectrum fees. So these are conversations that we all need to have together to ensure that the telecommunication sector that is currently the workhorse that is pulling other industries, including uh, the media industries, you know, up. We are able to support it so that we, are, we also are able to reduce the cost of providing the service that now is not just a utility, but it's also a human right. So yes, uh, the telecommunication sector was not as badly impacted as other industries, but it also had its fair share of challenges. You raised concerns about taxation and levies. The argument is your chamber or your, your sector makes a lot of profits. What do you have to say about that? One of the shareholders, Etel, within the Etel Tigo brand, has decided to leave the market and government had had to step in as a step, you know, to ensure the continuity of it. And the question I ask is that you think that any businessman who is making a lot of profit would leave the market? No, it's not. You see, and so for currently for every one CD that you and I spend, about 48 pesos of that goes back to the government in forms of taxes, in form of levies, fees, and all of that has charged. Um, had it not been for the engagement that we had with the EPA, the new executive director, EPA had gone to Parliament uh, towards the end of 2019 and had res resulted in increments of their permit by over five, 500%. We had had to, but then it's been passed by Parliament, so we had to get back to the EPA and go and negotiate payment terms for that. That is a hike in the cost of permitting for the tire companies. We have the situation where um, Ghana Highway Authority, they charge for the use of their reservations. and. Unfortunately, it's only the telecommunication sector that we are charged $280. It's not even in cities, dollars per kilometer when we lay fiber within the reservation. Now the Ghana Highway Authority wants to charge the same $280 per kilometer when you even string cable, cables that are not buried underground. So there are a lot of costs, you know, that are involved in, uh, in, 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 in the telecommunication sector. Don't forget. There were some Ghanaian companies that were given licensing to run, you know, data services. A lot of them have, you know, folded up. It just tells you how difficult the sector is. Oh, you had that, the uh, chief executive of the telecoms chamber, Ken Ashigwe. Now, the huge investments in production of hand sanitizers to curb the spread of COVID-19 may have caused cosmetics manufacturers access to packaging materials. That is one of the challenges that beauty brand Nature's Genesis is currently grappling with. 
But that is not deterring Chief Executive Betty Kimball from following her dream of creating a beauty brand that will sell across the African continent. Here's her story today on the Joy Business Van. Hi, Joy Business Van. My name is Betty Kimball, a UK trained cosmetic scientist, the CEO of Nature's Genesis Skincare and Nature's Genesis Cosmetic Science Institute. Welcome to my world. When Betty's daughter developed a skin disorder, that was what got her interested in skincare. We went to the doctors, did everything, and nothing seemed to work. The good thing was I had traveled to Ghana, so on my way back to the UK, I went to Sherbada and some Moringa dried leaves. So I told my husband, you know, why don't we try home remedy? And when we mixed everything up, it seemed to work. And day in and day out, my interest in the skincare industry kept growing. So she enrolled in a UK cosmetic science institute and decided to start her own beauty brand in Ghana. Have you got the weight correct? Yes, yes please. Great. Everything is done correctly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are the lid well closed? Can I have a check? Yes, please. The all four closed. Perfect. We try as much as we can to source a lot of the raw materials here in Ghana, like the shea butter, cocoa butter. However, we import some like the grape seed and the argan oil. Once we have all, we try to bring them together. It goes into phases before we go into production, packaging, and then we take it into the market. Nature's Genesis use of natural ingredients for skin and hair care products set it apart. The products were doing well on the market. Then the COVID-19 pandemic set in. Not only did sales go down because of lockdown restrictions, but production was affected because of limited access to raw materials and packaging products. We've been in the queue since March, asking for the same packaging, but it's no more in the system and we can't get them and we can't make production because from what we were told, there was the need for hand sanitizers, so many people rushed in there, picked those bottles and had to use it. So now no bottles, no production, and business is slowing. One thing in this industry you have to bear in mind is many a times people mistake the carrier oils as essential oils. Carrier oils are totally different. Betty has also had to make adjustments at her Cosmetic Science Institute, which has trained many individuals interested in the beauty industry. I have trained over 80 people, aside the ones that I run when I've been poached to do training for big organization, but as an institution, we've trained a lot, like roughly 80 people, and they all come out with their own skincare brand and making them entrepreneurs. Do you think that some essential oils are not good for certain skins? So, if you make a lotion, it might not be any of your carrier oils. Like I said, essential oils contains about 16 sensitizers which people can be allergic to. So before the COVID, I could run a class like, if we have a two-day class, it could be like 20. But if we have a serious intensive ones like these ones, which sometimes can be three months, we could run 14. But since the COVID-19, as you can see, we can do just maximum of four so that we can have enough space. And so this class size has actually decreased. Despite the setback, Betty says social media has been very helpful in marketing her products. Meantime, she is adjusting to the changes COVID-19 has brought but even that will not kill her dream. I want to own a cosmetic science institute where we run just like the universities do academic year and tra train much people, impart uh, knowledge in the cosmetic industry to them. And in terms of my skincare, 
I know many people want to go far, far, far to the European countries, but I say Africa is big. I want to enter into the African market, anywhere Africa. And we'll stay in this space a little while longer um, as we turn to our COVID-19 pandemic survival series where we engage entrepreneurs to figure out how they're working to stay in business despite the challenges posed by the pandemic. My guest tonight is CEO of Goat Masters, Gideon Padikonote. We'll speak to him in a bit. First, his story. The goats were virtually pushed on Gideon since nobody wanted them after his grandparents died. Then an idea came to mind. To move from just rearing the goats to adding value to them. After the goat have been butchered, we bring it here to process some into kebab and then also some into packaged uh, meat, like in one pound, in the pounds and then in kilos for our customers who order for the day. It was not an easy beginning for Gideon, who was then a graphic designer to take up this new challenge. As he recalls, he was sometimes laughed at. People meet you, they like, Charlie, oh, boom, this guy is smelling, but I know what like, I'm looking for. What keeps Gideon is his determination. Determination to see himself succeed at what he does. The keys to survive is one, um, God. I think if you have God on your side, you can move mountains. And then with God, when you have faith, you can move mountains. And then two, hard work. If you are very hard working, you, 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 you push walls, you push every barrier, and then focus. If you are focused in what you are doing, you love what you are doing, you give all yourself to what you are doing, at the end of the day, you'll be smiling. The story of Good Masters, owned by Gideon Padikonote. Hopefully, we can uh, get to speak to him tonight. Uh, Gideon, can you hear me? I'm done, well, I can hear you. Okay, great. And so you talk about, I mean, God, hard work and focus. Those were your keys for success four years ago when there was not a pandemic. Now there is a pandemic. Are those keys relevant at this point? Um, they are very, very relevant because these are internal keys. Um, keys that keep you going in tough times, keep, uh, uh, like keys that keep you going when all odds and things are fighting against you. These are internal things that we really, really need as an entrepreneur to be able to, to push through, especially in our part of the world. Mm. Yeah, so it's very relevant. Too. I, I, I want to hear about your experience during the, 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 this period of the pandemic. What has it been like for you? Okay, for the pandemic, um, I think it was a blessing in disguise. Um, actually, we were able to um, bring in a um, new set of customers from older customers that we had. We had a lot of people calling in um, to be able to stock their fridges, especially for the lockdown. Um, and then, yeah, it was good. But the challenge we had was um, an internal challenge which has to do with um, one of our managers, you know, booting with our money. That was the, the major challenge we had. But as the pandemic, because the government said essential workers can move about and do business, but with permits and stuff, we're able to do business um, during the lockdown. Well, so unlike other businesses uh, which had to suffer during this period, you're saying that, I mean, the lockdown was a blessing in disguise because people had to stock up and you were the people supplying the meat anyways. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that's... Yeah, so we, we, we had new customers, we were able to serve new people. So it was a blessing in disguise, yeah. Okay, and so having said that, um, we're going into 2021. I mean, some of your colleagues have not had it as easy as you have had it during this time of the pandemic. I always ask entrepreneurs when I speak to them about this, what the game plan is for 2021. Um, the game plan for 2021 is to increase um, the level of our sales because um, we have the mission of building the largest livestock market in Africa. So in 2021, we are looking at um, bringing in a lot of uh, um, salespeople whom we don't have to be paying like from 
are coffers, but they can make um, percentages or let's say um, incentives on um, products that they sell for us. So 2021, we are increasing our sales, our sales, our sales, our sales. Uh, yeah. So because we've realized... Uh, Go ahead. The survival of business, we've realized that the survival of every business has more to do with liquidity, has more to do with cash, like getting cash to run your day-to-day -day activities. And it's only sales that can bring this level of, of, of liquidity into the business. Okay. I want to ask uh, finally about competition. You talk about the period of the lockdown where everybody was at home. Now the restrictions have eased. Suppliers like you would have been uh, going to the restaurants, hotels to supply meat, but they are even having challenges uh, with numbers at this point. Do you deem that a challenge for your business as well? Um, um, okay, um, so one of our model has to do with dealing with individuals more than, let's say, restaurants, chop bars, and because when we, I experience on the ground for some years now, we've seen that dealing with individuals, you're able to break through more than dealing with, let's say, a restaurant. So it really helped us because we deal with individuals. We deal more with the homes. We deal more with individuals in their homes, offices, um, in their communities. So we are able to get orders and still deliver to these individuals. Because, but after the lockdown, some of the restaurants who also do um, takeaways do order from us. Though we have some restaurants that we do serve, but we do more of individuals. Okay, great. Thanks for speaking with us uh, tonight. Uh, that was CEO of uh, Good Masters, Gideon uh, Padikunute. One thing I learned is the business model that he's using at this point, which is not to supply the companies, hotels, restaurants, but individuals. And that's what is working for him uh, during this time of the pandemic. Thanks very much. Our next stop is the KJT New Market, where Traders, specifically at F-Line, say they are not reaping from their investments due to the lack of access to their location. They claim the only access route to the area has been locked up by authorities. Now, despite consistent efforts to tackle this, traders say they are unhappy with managers of the KGTR city market for failing to address their concerns. Mr. Pierre has more in this report. Traders at the new KGTR market say they make sales only when they move their wares from the shops to the roadside, which is against the rules and regulations of the market. The KJTR Traders Association says the board of KJTR City Market gave them timelines to solve the problem which have elapsed. The traders say sales have been adversely affected and are demanding immediate response to their plight. <laughs> For those of us on the F-Line, there is no entry point to this place. This is affecting sales. The other areas have various entry points, which bring them more customers. During this festive period, I have been forced to parade my wares outside the market. Even chance in a crown, I cut any monocran, you could hear because a bar. Yadar Nipana will be rejoined. Yadar is in some court, the other side and got to add here. Hey, Hano, we don't compare the other side and our other side move faster than here. I need a very slow. This is a big problem. It is affecting sales. We need assistance to fix this. I'm only saying, keep it moving. On the other side of the market, traders are enjoying sales, though not as expected. Chairman of the KJT Apache Traders Association says management have refused to implement certain rules and regulations because of the political season. This, he says, is having a negative impact on their businesses. Meanwhile, leadership that the traders say they will come out strongly next year to ensure their grievances are addressed. When we met the management, they told us that 100 meters to this facility, no one was allowed to sell around it but that is not the case because of what political expediency nobody wants to what, ensure the bylaws to work then also if you come to the first floor on the children's hospital session we have about 700 to 800 shops which have not been opened due to the fact that accessibility to that area is difficult and these people are our members we've we've met with management we've met with uh, kma the mayor and all the other people who are concerned we've not seen anything yet but what we want to promise 
We want to assure our members and then promise the powers that be. Come next week, next year, the first month of next year, the various traders associations are going to come together and ensure that what the uh, city authorities have to do to make that place accessible for uh, traders to come inside and will those uh, buyers to also get access to the market. We are going to do that. Operations manager of the Traders Association, Ahmed Kwating, says they are currently working with banks to support them financially to boost their alien businesses. Are you near there? Yeni anga sanaonsi eba hano yendru wa iya kwa enti noni ya ifya sedi ya ubi abenya ni place wa metani asesa sedi ni mabeko ya ubang sa umaba amuni ya be meetings be brei enu se okay jadi ni we bi ya be hiya bosi ya wini oni ebe tu ma guarantee amano. All right, and that's it for Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. Leaving you with our quick take tonight.